Hi everyone and welcome to the video. So let's talk about the role of fruit in health. Where did it all start? But first, I want you to picture this. You walk into a clinic and head to the reception. You ask to see the doctor. You're sent to have your vitals taken by the nurse, where you discover that you're slightly overweight and your blood pressure is a little bit high. She sends you to the doctor, who asks you a couple of questions, examines you, does all the right stuff, and then sends you to the lab to have a couple of tests done. Your sugar test comes back with a high value. That's your medication and says to you, let's see you in two weeks. In the meantime, exercise and eat lots of fruit and vegetables. You walk out of this consultation room and the only thought on your mind is, man, I eat fruit every day and vegetables at least once a day. How much more does the doctor want me to eat? Fruit and vegetables. I must say I was guilty of this countless times before the year 2017 when I was doing conventional medical practice. The long conversation about the how and what of lifestyle management was close to impossible during a regular consultation. This was because of the endless queues of patients waiting to be seen with at least one of them adding pressure to both the receptionist and I saying, I'm in a hurry, what's taking the doctor so long? This made the statement, eat lots of fruit and vegetables, a convenient way to end the consultation. Plus, it's true, right? Um. Not so much. Let's talk about this. From as far back as history goes, it's generally been known that vegetables, not fruit and vegetables, are healthy. Biblical accounts mention Daniel and his friends, who refused to eat the delicacies of the king of Babylon for 10 days, but chose to eat only vegetables. In the Western world, up until the mid 20th century, people ate lots of vegetables. Many doctors at the time advocated for eating less sugar. In fact, in 1948, in his book, The Practice of Endocrinology, Dr. Raymond Green made the following recommendations regarding the prevention of obesity. Foods to be avoided. One, bread and everything else made with flour. Two, cereals, including breakfast cereals and milk puddings. Three, potatoes and all other white root vegetables. Four, foods containing much sugar. Five, all sweets. And it went on. In fact, people like me who are a little older will remember a cartoon, Popeye the Sailor Man, that premiered on television in 1929 and was quite popular till the end of the century. For the younger guys and girls, it was a story of a one-eyed sailor called Popeye who was engaged in a never-ending fight with his arch-rival and nemesis, Bluto, over the love of his life, a lady called Olive Oil. Wait a second, did you just say olive oil? Yes, I did. For some reason, cartoons those days were educative. Olive oil, healthy. Anyway, back to the story. So Popeye and Bluto used to fight a lot, but Bluto was much bigger and stronger than him. The only way Popeye could defeat him was by snapping open a can of spinach, eating it, which would cause an immediate increase in the size of his muscles and render a very severe beating to Bluto. In short, they used to teach us that in order to get strong, eat vegetables. There wasn't any need for sugar-filled energy drinks. You see, fruit was a delicacy, a treat reserved for special occasions. For example, to reward children after completing their chores. You could say it was the ice cream and chocolate of the day. Fruit was fermented to make wine, a staple of feasts and celebrations. In Hebrew tradition, fruit like pomegranates were used as an aphrodisiac and given by the king to his men of war after they had triumphed against the enemy. In the Middle East, dates were and are often given to guests as a sign of warm welcome. We could go on and on, but in summary, fruit was for blasting. Before we continue, if you're finding value in this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, bottom right corner, as this helps to support us. All right, now back to the video. So where and when did things change? When did fruit join the health brigade? In 1992, the US Department of Agriculture came up with a food pyramid, which gave recommendations on what food and how much of it people should eat. Wait, why is the Department of Agriculture and not the Department of Health coming up with guidelines that directly affect people's health? Anyway, let's put a bookmark there. The Food Pyramid of 1992 recommended that people eat two to four servings of fruit per day. Let's put that into context. One serving of fruit equals one cup of raw fruit, one cup of 100% fruit juice, or half a cup of dried fruit. In the case of apples or bananas, one serving would be equal to one large apple or one large banana. I cannot imagine eating four large bananas or four cups of pineapple daily. The amount of sugar being consumed was unbelievable. Maybe this is where the whole idea of eating platters of fruit came from. I don't know. The science is clear on this. Sugar is sugar, whether it's from fruit, honey, or soda. If you consume equal amounts of sugar from each of these sources, they will have the same negative effect. Another may say, fruit contains vitamin E, antioxidants, and phytonutrients, which are important for reducing inflammation. They surely must be okay. Well, the science is clear and says that the excess sugar in them will cause inflammation, and then we'll have to hope that the antioxidants, the vitamin E, the phytonutrients in them will negate the effect. It's like shooting yourself in the foot and then going to the surgeon to stitch it up and stop the bleeding. Why not just not shoot yourself in the first place? Think about it.
We've experienced a similar problem with the ongoing COVID pandemic. Many people have ended up drinking and eating large amounts of juice and fruit with an aim of getting vitamin C to boost their immunity. As a result, many of them have put on weight, become obese, which is a risk factor for COVID infection. I always advise my clients to eat a wide range of vegetables instead of fruit, as many of them are rich in vitamin C, vitamin E, and so much more. No wonder the scourge of non-communicable diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes, and cancers just kept rising through the end of the 20th century till today. I understand that the cause and effect of NCDs is multifactorial, that is, smoking, drinking excessive amounts of alcohol, but definitely the food pyramid of 1992 wasn't helping the cause for which it was proposed to have been set. The truth behind this was that there were other factors at play. There was no concrete scientific evidence behind the magic number of two to four servings of fruit. Fruit contains two types of sugar, glucose and fructose. While the metabolism of glucose was fairly well understood by the 1990s, it would only be in the early 21st century when more extensive research about the effect of fruit and vegetables on various health conditions would be published and fructose metabolism elucidated. We'll discuss these research findings and fructose metabolism in the upcoming videos. Unfortunately, this food pyramid forms the basis by which many doctors like myself were and are being trained in. And that's how food joined the health brigade. In case you missed any of the videos in this series, I've attached a playlist just right here. So click right here and subscribe, bottom right hand corner. See you soon.